Hi, this is Keiko from Brooklyn Shoe Space. I'm so happy to have Sophia Wang of Made with Reishi today here with us. Um, you know, working side by side with Rebecca Heights of the Vegan Cord Wainer, um, we and you know for years now and starting our own vegan shoe line, Loyal Footwear. We've always been you know on the hunt and look out for materials, vegan materials and new leather alternative materials um, that were out on the market. So mushroom leather was one of them. And so we are super happy to have Sophia on with us. Um, let's see if she is on. Mm, not yet. Yeah. And made with reishi, I don't know if... Um, some people have researched a little bit, but they basically sort of outdid other um, mushroom leathers. Um, you know, hold on, let me see. Uh, made with reishi is not on with us. Hold on. Um, Michael Work Studio is on. I wonder if that is okay. Let me see. I'll invite them and see. Hi, I wonder if where everybody's joining us from. Thank you for watching. Okay, this is waiting for Michael Works. But I think we were trying to meet with made with reishi so i'm gonna see if their account is on okay let me go and invite them mm -hmm. hang in there please <laughs> uh let me see oh got a request Yes, made with reishi is on. Great. Hey. Hi, how are hey. you? Hi, good very to see nice you. Hey, to, Keiko. Yeah, very nice to meet you. Yeah. How, how long have you been quarantining where you are? Uh, we've been sheltered in place since mid-March, so over three months now. And where yeah. are you located? Are you in West Coast? Yeah, we are in the San Francisco Bay Area. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Do you, did the office or the lab close down for a little bit? And were you able to go into work? Or? Yeah, so when Shelter in Place started, we, we definitely brought our operations down to a minimum level. Um, mm -hmm. Everyone started working from home. We did have a team of people who kept a low level of care going on on site um, because, you know, we need to keep our facilities secure and safe and we work with live mycelium with live materials. So we had to make sure that there was a baseline level of care. Oh, at this moment? There's a little bit of a delay, but um, yeah. Oh, can you hear me? I'll wait for the video and audio to catch up. Yeah, the video oh. and, and audio lagged for a bit, but I can hear you now. Oh, okay. Yeah, so so now you are back in the offices? Everybody's back? Or are you kind of t doing partial um, work? Like, how, how does it work? Like, uh, are you working at like a 70% capacity and rotating or... Yeah, we so we have a, a phased plan to return to full operations. Um, some of us are working on site, some of us are working from home, and um, we're also ramping back up our production. And we have an amazing team of people Good. who are making our materials, you know, by hand in yeah. our facilities. So they're on site. On site. All right. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Um, let's go back a little bit in time and a quick intro. So. What do you do? And a little bit about you and about Made with Reishi. 
Sure, yeah. So my name is Sophia Wang, and I am the co-founder of MycoWorks and also our chief of staff and culture. And MycoWorks is a biomaterials company based in the San Francisco Bay Area that creates reishi fine mycelium, which is a mycelium-based material that is an option for leather that mm -hmm. is neither animal nor plastic, but offers performance and quality comparable to leather. And um, about made with reishi, that's a, a term that really envisions um, the world we're trying to build. We would love to see a world full of beautiful products and objects of value made with reishi. And that's actually also the name of our um, Instagram handle and our site. So oh, got to add cool. that, got to add that plug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How did you start doing what you do? Yeah, that is a, a long and interesting story and I'll try to keep it succinct. So in 2007, I connected with another Bay Area artist mm -hmm. named Philip Ross. Uh -huh. And he had at that point been creating sculptures and art objects out of mycelium for over two decades. Wow. And this was my first encounter with mycelium as a material at all and then as an art material in this application and um, just the amazing like aesthetic expressions and possibilities of shape and form were really inspiring. So Phil and I started working together as collaborators on an exhibit and series of public programs working at the intersection of art and biotechnology and education uh -huh, uh -huh. and had a really great strong working relationship and I was at that time finishing a doctoral dissertation on poetry and, wow, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's a yes. whole other there's a whole other story. And um uh I finished my PhD uh -huh. and around the time that I was finishing, Phil came back to me and said that, you know, he was receiving global interest in his mycelium materials Material. and yeah. from like global brands that actually wanted to try this material in their manufacturing processes. And mm. so we started the company together to to turn that into a reality. Wow. That yeah. is so great. So you mentioned Philip. So there, you, uh, he's your partner. Is there a third person? I saw some a photo with a third person. Yeah. So the collaborators. Um, yes. Yes. So Phil is certainly a collaborator in this endeavor as a co-founder, um, and certainly another collaborator is Matt, our CEO. And I would absolutely name as collaborators our entire team: the engineers and scientists and mm -hmm. chemists and. Um, the storytellers and designers and the people making our materials. These are all absolutely our collaborators in this effort as well. How, how many people total is is your is at your facility and and your company? Right now, we're we're getting close to fifty, which wow. is nutty to me because uh, probably a year and a year and a half ago, we were more like ten or twelve. Wow, that's so amazing. we've had a lot of growth Such in the last growth. year. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's so great. So when you got interested in mycelium, was a uh, refined leather alternative like the material you envisioned from the beginning? Were you always so when, thinking? Mm -hmm. Yeah, when we first started the company, and this was in 2013, the first applications that we were exploring were um, the sort of obvious immediate ones that had cut Phil's art practice and Phil had been growing sculptures and objects um, mm -hmm. and bricks out of mycelium. So more rigid manifestations. Yes. And um, it, was, it was as we started to explore um, softer and more flexible formulations that we realized there was a great potential in application. Actually, the first, the first industry that we looked at was footwear. And oh, wow. um, shoe companies were talking to us in, uh -huh. in, yeah, in like late 2015, early 2016, we were connecting with shoe companies who saw the potential for this material in both shoe uppers and soles. And right. so we essentially pivoted to working on more so softer formulations. Softer goods. Oh, that's so great. Yeah. Did I mean, you? right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Go and ahead, I'll, go and I'll just say that, you know, the, both of those applications, like the first application we were thinking about um, structural or formal applications like that in itself was a pioneering application and idea in the world mycelium materials had not been used in this way prior to Phil's practice and the things mm -hmm. that we were pushing forward and so mm -hmm. that in itself was a pioneering thing and then the shift to leather as well a new pioneering yeah. idea yeah oh absolutely um can you 
tell us a little bit about the process of creating a mycelium leather? How do you, how does it work? Sure. So different phases of the process have different analogs to industries and practices that already exist and that are familiar. Okay. So I would say for the early part of the process, um, the early phases of growth where we're basically working with, um, you know, a baseline substrate and um, cultivating the mycelium, um, it's, it's actually analogous to what you would find in agricultural production of mm. mushrooms or mycelium. And mm -hmm. I should back up here for, you know, mycelium might be a new term for some people. Yeah. So mycelium refers to the um, fine network of threads that uh -huh. forms the vegetative part of the organism that produces mushrooms. And uh -huh. you'll find it growing abundantly like underground, you yeah, know, beneath the forest floor or right. among That's wood. what I was yeah. imagining. It was a network underneath the ground. Yes. Yes. So we essentially cultivate a growing environment that that is happy and healthy uh -huh. for mycelium. Uh -huh. And so this phase of the process, I would say, is akin to gardening, akin uh -huh. in some ways to any process where there's fermentation. So think yeah. about the production of Some fine wine or cheeses. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, in the process of our production, and the things that we introduce into the process, this is where we are able to um, introduce the fine mycelium process. And this is uh -huh. our own proprietary right. and, and special way of tending yeah. and treating our material to produce reishi. So at the other end of that process, I would say the, the analogy is closer to how you finish and treat leather. Mm -hmm. So we do end up with a hide. We do end up having to put it through tanning and finishing processes and refining mm -hmm. it to get the finish that we want. Oh, it's so beautiful. What's your favorite part of the process? My favorite part of the process is, um, it's definitely the hands-on process. So as anyone here who works with leather, works with hides knows each hide is unique and has an amazing arc of care and mm -hmm. um, caretaking and selection yep. To, yep. to get that piece of leather onto your workbench. So yeah. similar to our process, our fine mycelium experts have become experts um, by touch in yeah. handling the material and being able to sense and tend it by touch wow. the quality and to to sort of encourage the growth and the outcome uh -huh. that we want. And it's uh -huh. not it's not something that you can just describe and pick it up right away. This is something uh -huh. that is learned over time. It's learned through the practicing of the craft. Uh -huh. And so in that way I think of it as a craft and an art form and like very specific to the experts who are actually practicing making this material. Wow. So that, that to me is like incredibly special. And it means that every yeah. piece of reishi that you get has that, has that hands-on, that hands history of hands-on care. Yeah, yeah. from the beginning, from the beginning. Yeah. 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 How yeah. long does it take yeah. for mycelium to grow like in the plate? So I don't know. I'm imagining a plate in a lab, but I'm not so sure visually. But um, how long does it take to grow something that's thick enough for you to start the tanning process? Yeah, so mycelium is um, a really abundant and resilient natural material. So given the right conditions, it will grow happily and um, voraciously. So we, we have a process right now that averages out to a few weeks of growth wow. um, in, in the container that we mm -hmm. use. Mm -hmm. And if you add on um, finishing processes and you know post-harvest and things like that, the entire process might be something like five or six weeks. Wow. And how thick does it get? Does it keep on growing if you don't harvest? Uh, that's a great, that's a great question. Um, the, the short answer is yes. So, so when you ask how thick it is, we actually grow our sheets to spec. So okay. this is something that we determine with our customers um, oh. for the intended applications. And so that's what's remarkable, remarkable about this process is you can grow it to a specified thickness and wow. it, you know, there's our environment and growth time and, and things like that. Yeah, so we can, we can achieve a wide range of, of millimeters. Wow, and with that material, after tanning, does the tanning process make it thinner or thicker or do you account that in? when you're growing it so that it's a little thicker when you harvest? 
But I don't believe that the tanning process thickens or thins it. Yeah, Uh really, the the control is more in um, growing it to a specified thickness. And yeah, we've we've had customers experiment with. I know that you're um, you're probably all familiar with the practice of splitting, and we've had we've had customers um, experiment with that in their prototyping and and fabrication, but. Um, typically, we're just we're growing to spec. Spec. Wow. So gr- growing to spec really means that you can also um, make it to a specific shape, size yes. that you need. Yeah. Yeah. Is, wow. Basis. Say a furniture. Say somebody who wants. client or do you usually you work on sheets so uh the the connection cut out a little bit during the question but i think i think i got it the question is around um do we do we piece together sheets or can we grow to to the size that's requested yeah yeah yeah. So, um, yeah, currently we're, we're growing to a specified sheet size and that's for ease of working with our partners in their fabrication process. Um, but we, we do not currently have a limit in terms of the size and shape that we can make. It's really just the, the environment to support it. So back in 2016, just to show that we could do it, we grew a sheet that was the size of a half cowhide. So Whoa. 26 square feet and, you know, Whoa. it was huge. It was really big. <laughs> yeah, that is huge. You know, and just, just show that we could do it because we can. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, currently we're, we're providing customers a standard sheet size. So, uh-huh. And then um, do you also have grades, like quality, thickness levels, like the way cowhides and alligator hides might have? Or is yeah, it pretty uniform? Do. We do. Right now we have a, a grading system that um, is developed in collaboration with our brand partners and they tend to um, reflect things like thickness or surface quality and and also um, with the application, the potential application that we have in mind. Very cool. So what's your favorite finish of Reishi in the collection that you have so far? I saw some different like, oh, textures yeah. so, and colors. I know. And- this is my chance to show the samples that we brought yes. for this. So here, so here's a sheet of um, the Reishi Natural. And uh-huh. um, you can see that there's sort of the natural variation and the natural pigmentation. And mm-hmm. I would say that this is by far my favorite finish um, because this is where you get to see like the unique qualities of mycelium as its own natural material in the world. Um, there's a uh-huh. there's a natural urge to compare it to leather, uh, animal hide leather, because of the way that it it handles and behaves. Uh-huh. You know the the drape and the hand feel and the way that we finished it. But I I do want to emphasize that mycelium is absolutely its its own natural material and and with its own unique qualities. So this is where you really get to see you get to see that variation and you get to see um, Uh the infinite ways that it expresses. Yeah. 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 I mean, for every finished, um, you know, natural street of reishi, we have so many variations in our, in our studio and in our lab that I hope one day we can make more visible to the world. I'll also show the black embossed version, Uh um, which of course is, you know, classic and great for wonderful fashion apples. Applications. Yes. Um, let's see if I can hold it up closer so you can see the finish. Yeah. Yes. Um, and emba- and so this one has, a, has a glossier finish and sort of. Yeah. Embossed with some yep. sort of pattern a little bit. Like, try. Is it resembling sort of like the. The side a little bit? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I might have lost you for a second. Yeah. I, you're, you're paused. But yeah, it has an embossing to, to give it a nice pebbling effect. Very cool. Um, tell us a little bit about your collaboration between the Spanish t- um, tannery that you work with that does all the finishes, like w- what you just showed us. Oh, yeah. So um, we have a Catalonian tannery partner named Curtidos Badia, and they are a fourth generation family owned tannery that is specializing in supplying 
leather to luxury fashion. And when we started looking for a tannery partner to work with in finishing and creating branded leather goods, we wanted to work with the very best. We wanted to work with a tannery that um, had deep heritage and would also be interested in being extremely forward looking in developing a new process and a new material for um, sustainable practices moving forward. And um, Badia is an amazing partner in this because they have, you know, with 400 years or something of um, expertise in this. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, that's so great. And do you visit many tanneries when you chose one? Um, we actually had a, a great um, personal relationship through our chief of product who is um, an, an amazing uh, leather crafts person and, and specializes in uh, supply chain in the leather industry. So uh, our chief of product has a long standing relationship with this uh, tannery. And so that's how we connected with Badia. But we have, we have also connected with a lot of different tanneries in, in the process of educating ourselves. Right, oh, that's so great. Um, in the future, like what would mycelium production facility look like? Do you envision it to be lots of smaller facilities, local tanning, or <laughs> I was just wondering. Yeah, yeah. So um, actually find, I mean, similar to the way that the process right now has analogs in existing industries, you can find analogs for what a fine mycelium production facility might look like in um, a, few, a few places and, and the main one being agricultural mushroom production. So there are basically the equipment and systems that you would find there would be analogous to systems that we are developing to be able to create fine mycelium. Um, and I, I do see the potential in being able to have facilities that are co-located with, for instance, the substrate supplier. So mycelium grows on, um, plant biomass, so the agricultural byproducts of, of industries like lumber. And, and so you could see the potential for facilities where you're getting the substrate and it's, it's local and mycelium can be cultivated nearly anywhere in the world basically. So there's the potential to locate your facility close to where the design and manufacturing is happening as well. So you can optimize your supply chain that way and reduce right. carbon footprint in, right. the, in the process. Right. I guess the one neck would be the bottleneck would be the tanning process. I guess that there's not that many tanneries. So right. that yeah. might have so to finding, be yeah. <laughs> sent to Yeah, finding ways to make that portable or yeah, having, somehow having your your partner relationships right. be local as well. Right. So you did mention that you work in a specific sizing, like a sheet sizing now, uh standard sizing, but would if you were to make like try to do zero waste and make um uh mycelium form like a pattern like say like a foot, footwear pattern is it too small of a piece to tan for the tanneries to work with if it's I don't... too small of a piece i was wondering if you can do that i don't foresee that being a problem because actually just in our development process where we've mm -hmm. been developing a tanning process specific to mycelium, which, which does have to be developed because mycelium is not actually animal collagen. It's, yeah. it's a different material. Yeah. So um, we are learning in the process, mm -hmm. um, the chemistry required to do this. So in the process of developing this, we have certainly put smaller pieces through the tanning process at Badia, um, mm -hmm. And so, and, and also on site ourselves. So I don't see a smaller piece being due, but I, it's a, it's an interesting question that you're asking about if we wanted to grow the mycelium, the um, reishi into custom forms, whether it's, you know, a, a, a two dimensional form that is shaped or something yeah. more future looking, um, you know, it, mycelium has this amazing quality where if you, if you place living pieces next to each other, they will form a natural bond, which itself will then be stronger than any portion of the the rest of the sheet, like right. the bond itself, because it's right. pure mycelium would be incredibly strong. So there's a lot of potential for like fabulous growing, like mm. <laughs> grow grow to form. Right. So there there is a question there as to how you would then 
bring in the tan or something that is already formed and that's sort of like the two steps like down the line and, yeah, um, yeah but we're certainly thinking ahead to that because we know yeah yeah exactly it's it's future future thinking but because yeah. we know it can be grown in these ways and um it is something that we're thinking about oh definitely cool um can you also recycle or upcycle any scraps aside from being biodegradable what can be done with the off cut um yeah well so right now we are in the um we have the great enviable problem that every scrap of our material is committed to a potential brand partner so um, everything gets used from the smallest piece to the largest sheet and so yes smaller pieces are definitely useful can be used in um, you know a smaller project whether it's a limited edition or a smaller accessory um, or an experimental application um, and if is the question about like could we piece them together or yeah can you repurpose it to to uh, raw right. material? Um, yeah, I, I anticipate we'd be able to do that. Right now, our full focus is on perfecting our, you know, our full size sheets and then finding the right applications for any pieces that, that are outside of that range and um, working with our brand partners to find the perfect application for everything that we can provide. Very cool, very cool. You mentioned the brand partners. Can we talk a little bit about uh, brand partners? Who are you work <laughs> Who are you working with? I, if it's a secret, you don't yeah, have to tell I us. Am, it's okay. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I <laughs> I'm really, really excited to say who they are, but I can't right yeah. now. Okay. Um, okay. We are, you know, under confidential agreement with with a select set of brand partners um, in. Uh, fashion and footwear and they are some of the most elite and um, valued brands in the world and so I'm really proud that we get to introduce Reishi to the world through brand partnerships with with the very best so very you'll cool. you'll hear we'll soon yeah okay cool <laughs> so. um, so there's a question that says um, is it feasible that it might be developed to be a durable enough material to be used for soling material so soling material being on the very bottom of the B shoe? Bottom of the shoe. Yeah. Is that a possibility um, to use that? Yeah, I would not. Yeah, I would not rule it out. Right now, the applications that we're looking at are not on the sole. They mm -hmm. are more on the upper or in like an apparel usage. But I, mm -hmm. would, not, I would not rule that out. Right. Very cool. Um, I've seen tanneries offer design competitions and such. Would you guys do such a thing for um, to like use the materials and have makers experiment? Or is that kind of what you're doing in a bigger scale with a brand partnerships? Yeah, I um, I would love to be able to do that. And right now we are we are working on a pilot scale facility um into our our current facility that will raise our production capacity so that we can um, serve a wider range of people and designers mm -hmm. and markets and uh you know a focused design competition with independent designers um, would be a fantastic thing to do so we're certainly looking ahead to that and as i mentioned before currently our, our production is committed to our brand partners in preparation for product launch. Very cool, very cool. Down the line, after, I guess I'm kind of thinking way future, would you guys start your own brand as well, like an in-house brand? Um, I Again, I wouldn't rule out the possibility of a, a product made with Reishi that we design mm -hmm. and produce mm -hmm. in-house. Mm -hmm. um, Right now, you know, we're obsessed with um, quality and mm -hmm. um, performance of our material and once and we yeah. want to introduce Reishi to the world with brands who are obsessed with quality and performance and excellence. And so we are the fine mycelium experts in the world right now. And we want to work with the brands who are the experts in Perfect. the yeah. beautiful right. apparel and Understand. footwear that they make for the world. So 
I understand. That's our focus right now. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. I understand. I'm sure like the whole world who, of makers are just like anticipating, you know, like just like waiting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I, I understand <laughs> one step at a time. Mm-hmm. Um, but speaking of quality, um, yeah, the durability and the material, like the qualities are very close to leather. What is the process you were saying? Um, I, I read somewhere that you also have a third party um not a lab what do you call it like they they check check the quality and durability can you yes. tell us a little bit about yeah that a li- sure yeah so we we prefer not to sing our own we prefer for um, our quality and performance to be validated by our public and mm-hmm. by third party partners so we conducted um, a series of tests in partnership with Vartest, which is a textile and apparel uh, testing lab based in New York. In New York, right. And that is actually, that data is published. Yeah, oh, do you know Vartest? I've only heard about yeah, it. I've, yeah, so that, mm-hmm. yeah, so that data is actually published on our website um, in a, uh, at madewithreishi.com. It's a story called, I believe a story of superior quality and, mm-hmm. and that there's charts there that shows the data for, uh, we did tensile strength tests. We did tests on color fastness under mm-hmm. a range of conditions, exposure to moisture and things like that. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we'll continue to do that as we, as we produce iterations of Reishi to, to show the range of um, performance and excellence that, that the material offers. Very cool. And I know you can't talk too much about the brands yet, but um, is it sort of footwear ready and like more extreme stitching to he- heating? Has it gone through that kind of um, apply uh, up, applications? Like has it gone through yeah. iterations of a lot of other than the three test tests or three, yeah three values like the quality like the durability stretching like is there a heat how about like adhesives does it work well with adhesives I'm just curious yeah uh, so without getting into too many details we we are um we do have a a brand partner um one of the best in the world in footwear who has been prototyping and doing wear testing for wow. footwear made with reishi so it has been fabricated and has been worn by users and and is basically in the prototyping wear testing phase very cool it's so great that you've been like improving the quality of the material like every every use every cycle you can improve it really yes wow very fascinating yeah that that, that's that's how that's how we've worked from the start was in close um collaboration with the brand partners basically Mm -hmm. giving them sheets and um getting feedback from them from their protesting and fabrication experiments and using the feedback that they're giving us to then give them an improved version and so it's been an iterative um and and close partnership with these brands and um it it ensures that we're developing a product that is ready for them and is ready for customers. Very cool. In um, fe- was it February uh, during Fashion Week? I think you did. Uh, you had a yes. showroom in Soho area. Is that showroom a permanent location? Uh, sorry, could you repeat that? Cut, cut out for a second. <laughs> uh, is um, th- you had a little showroom space to showcase your work? Is that a permanent location or was that like a pop-up location? Um, that was a pop-up showroom and it was up for a week during New York Fashion Week back in February. And um, we will potentially do, do something like that in the future. Um, this was an amazing moment for us. You know, at that point, um, Reishi had been in development since we founded the company in 2013. So call that seven years at that point yeah. of yeah. developing this and getting it ready for the public and mm-hmm. um, making sure that it was to a quality standard that we we're ready to share and have people like touch and feel and, and see in person. And mm-hmm. it was incredibly rewarding. Um, 
really exciting and, and really sort of signaled a new phase for us. Um, it was our, our brand launch and, and really showing Reishi to the, to the world for the first time. Oh, that's great. Um, outside of our confidential, you know, partnerships right. with our with our brand partners. So yeah, so uh, I wouldn't rule out doing another pop up. I, I imagine we will do something similar um, in the near future when we announce our brand partnerships and do our product launches. Very cool. Um, what do you see for the leather industry and your company in like ten years? Yeah, that's a big question. I'm sure the audience here has a lot of ideas about that too. Um, so the first thing that I feel like is important to say and observe is that leather craft and the practice of leather is um, something that's been with us since nearly the beginning. It's been a part of human culture and civilization since nearly the very start. So I don't see that as a practice that we are going to leave behind anytime soon. It's deeply embedded um, in our culture and practices. Right. So, so I think that what we are doing is offering um, a really beautiful natural option for applications that currently use animal hide leather mm -hmm. um, or, or plastic based uh, leather alternatives. And in doing this, we're offering a new paradigm for using natural materials in um, and a cycle that is regenerative using, you know, yeah. bio plant biomass from that are byproducts from other industries and a material itself that grows abundantly and, mm -hmm. and swiftly. Mm -hmm. And that this can be developed in parallel with these traditions that have a deep heritage um, in, in human civilization. So right. uh, yeah. I think it's always nice to offer an, option that gives mm -hmm. people and and designers and manufacturing a choice that that is based on the values and the value that our material offers um yeah that is so neither you're... animal nor plastic yeah right so you i i guess um you wouldn't be replacing the animal slaughter industry really but maybe there's a way for them to to reduce <laughs> as well um yeah and the greenhouse gas emissions and the environment do do you feel like you'll have a huge impact on that yeah it's a it's a complicated question and it's a long-term project right and it's very much on our minds so if you think about what we're doing as as basically within the realm of um, sustainable agriculture, like using a material that is abundant, that is resilient, that is part of the most regenerative and, and resilience practice on earth. And mycelium helps um, break down natural matter in, into the soil and into earth to sort of allow for, for e ecosystem regeneration. So it's a, it's a vital part of our, our natural, uh, our, our environment's natural health. So if you consider that we are adjacent and related to that, for me, this is very much about um, more sustainable agricultural yeah. practices yeah. because we are expanding the applications and showing yeah. that you can actually make materials in addition to food, in addition to medicines. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, there, there is a big conversation to be had about greenhouse gas impact from the livestock industry. And that is also part of the larger agricultural story about how we're producing food and yeah. I, yeah. I think what we're offering is a great paradigm for how to think about um, improving manufacturing and yeah. supply chains yeah. with natural materials. Yeah, oh, definitely. Um, I have, I see a few questions. I'm going to just go back really quickly to just look um, and if it's okay to read through, hold on a second. Um, there, there's many anticipated viewers that want to work with the material somehow. Um, yes. <laughs> what, what is the best way to keep following you? I think social media and the websites and newsletters. They're they're asking the when best way when when are you launching? <laughs> um, and then. <laughs> But I think I, as I 
spoke to you and hear that every you're innovating all the time so it seems like having say a swatch card to show somebody is not as relevant at the moment seems like you're still improving um and colors might be limitless i'm not sure <laughs> but so I, i'm not sure um yeah if a if you are going to have like a launch, hold on a second. I'm like reading and trying to talk at the same time. Does this okay. global <laughs> pandemic make some I'm keeping, difficulty? I'm keeping track of all the questions. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. Does this global pandemic make some difficulties for cooperation in the production of material? Uh, in the beginning, you were mentioning that you needed like a minimal, but still you needed to upkeep the, because it's a living, um, yes. material you needed to keep it up okay uh, and there's some comments about guessing which companies that you might be working with but we'll <laughs> let them speculate um, and then the, uh, just very personally what is your favorite part about your job oh <laughs> okay so I, I heard like uh, five I had five questions or comments there, so yeah. I'll try to sure. remember all of them. So the question or or the desire, which we do hear all the time from a lot of people just wanting to to get a sample of the material to, or a swatch and to work with it. We, we are very excited and looking forward to when we can provide samples and swatches to everyone who wants this. And yeah. um, so we're working on our pilot facility to expand our production capacity and um, I would say that we, you know, we don't, we do actually have a sta standard finishes at this point, the natural mm -hmm. and the black embossed. And so mm -hmm. when and if we are able to provide swatches more broadly, they would reflect those two. And the question about color being, um, you know, the the wide range of colors that are possible. Yes, we, in, in the early days, I remember we made like a hot pink, we made turquoise blue. So we we've done all sorts of color experiments. So Yes, that is in the future as well. Um, trying to remember all the questions. Oh, when will we launch? So we had plans and have plans to announce a partnership within the year. Of course, that was altered by mm -hmm. the pandemic. So that, that pushed global timelines along with ours by several months. So Right now, we are adjusting those timelines, but moving things forward with our brand partners and everyone's still really excited to launch as soon as we can. Um, my favorite part of my job uh, is the people. <laughs> so yeah. in, yeah, in the role of chief of staff and culture and also being a co-founder, I would say that the things that I focus on are the values and the vision and the people that make this all possible. Mm -hmm. None of this is possible without the people who are committed to the work and going on this journey with us. It's a big experiment, it's a big risk. We are bringing something new into the world. Yes. Uh, it's, it's amazing. And so it's great to have all these people who are, who like get the vision, are committed, are working together. We solve problems together, we celebrate together mm -hmm. and you know, sometimes I think that my work is mostly just relational. It's about mm -hmm. telling the story of mm -hmm. the company to the world, mm -hmm. the way that we're yeah. doing here. Yeah. And it's about reinforcing the story and the values and the vision with every person that I'm in touch with in the company um, for, for any matter that comes up on a daily basis or, mm -hmm. you know, with a longer vision in mind, because it, it is really always about reinforcing, like, what are we doing and why? Because mm -hmm. you have to know why you're in the room and why you're, why you're working this hard, frankly. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Do you bring your poetry into your, the lab? Do, does is that like a secret recipe into like making a happy yeah. reishi? <laughs> you know, yes. I actually think that there are a lot of secret recipes and tricks that come out of our um, heritage and art and craft and design that go to making the reishi happy. Um, for myself, I absolutely bring in my background in poetry and literature into this endeavor. Um, my my dissertation was studying epic poems. I wanted Ooh. to look at the 
the like all encapsulating stories that cultures tell themselves to reinforce their values, identify who their heroes and their uh -huh. and like their, their like most important founding ethics are uh -huh. in order to envision the future uh -huh. and, and to ground exactly them in their present and their past. And that's, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So yeah, so that I think about Yeah, it is related. I feel like you're yeah. doing yeah. exactly that in your actual life. <laughs> and work. Yeah, yeah. And and I I I think of it as continuity in that practice, just thinking about the stories that we tell to find and make meaning and to make a change in the world. Oh, that's so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much <laughs> for, for what you do. Um <laughs> And, <laughs> Thank you. And you were saying you collaborate also with a um, leather goods. There was like a uh, artisan on Instagram. Yes. Um, yes. Any small leather goods that you produce with her are those kind of vi visibly available to see? Kind of, I'm so curious. Yeah. The yeah, edge so size and yeah, all the right. manipulations she did. Yes, so we worked with uh, Beatrice Amblard, who has a, a leather design um, studio, a leather goods design studio called uh, April in Paris. And um, she's a great partner to us in um, working with the material to, to test that it would um, perform the, the same way as leather in fabrication process with sewing and gluing and the edge work. And um, she did fabricate some products out of it and they are they are exclusively for our uh prototyping r d enjoyment and are not available to the public okay. yet um but it, it like a really important process for learning how to work with the material in leather comparable applications do you, do you have it for yourself for example um do you wear test them or have you tried it out do you carry around oh yeah um, made with reishi <laughs> items with you Oh yeah, um, we've we've made little things over the years, like just you know, like a little bracelet or something, just mm -hmm. to be able to wear it and mm -hmm. and test it over time. And I I actually have a key fob that nice. I've had for you know two years now, and it's holding wow. up great. And yeah, Matt, our CEO, like one Christmas surprised us all with you know key fobs and bracelets made from it. So yeah, we do have it. It's it's out and among our our team, and and it's out in the real world. May I ask how the patina is with like the wear? How does it wear for, from just your personal experience? Yeah, it for me the experience is that it, it wears like a a fine leather. You, wow. you see it get get worn and and to take on like the creases and the shape of of its use over time. So it it it's very personal in that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and live. So fascinating. I'm really looking forward. <laughs> to, yeah, we are too. To, to seeing it when it's out to the market, um, you know, and even if it's a, in a limited way, I'm really fascinated by what you do and the progress that you're making and the innovation. This, Yeah. So thank you so much. Do you also collaborate with any of the other, I guess they're competitors, but... um other say mushroom leather kind of makers they are is that something that you cross paths with or is is it, are they competitors <laughs> I, yeah i would say that we are all collaboratively on our own paths developing hmm. an entirely new material yeah industry right yes. so myce mycelium materials and mycelium technologies didn't really exist 10 years ago. And we were a pioneer in that. Mm -hmm. And other companies have come forward to do that as well. And, you know, Phil and I as co-founders, we come from the world of academia and art practice. And the practice there is actually you want open discourse mm -hmm. and dialogue. Like all ships ride with the tide with the rise with the tide, right? Like we we all need to contribute to this body yeah. of knowledge. So each of us is yeah. contributing to pushing this forward. And, and so we, we welcome all the developments that are happening around us. We, we know that we're a leader in this and that, so we're, we're taking that role very seriously, what we are mm -hmm. going to put out into the world. Yeah. And so we do cross paths with them, obviously. We're, we're in the same conversation. Same we're in the same dialogue. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's wonderful.
That's so great to hear. Okay. Thank you so, so much for taking your time. Um, yes. And one day, we hope that we'll have your material in our hands one day to try out some things. And yes, yeah, thank you. Look, looking think, forward. <laughs> hopefully sooner rather than later. And yeah, definitely stay about... stay tuned yes. um, through our Instagram. Someone had asked what was the best way to stay in touch. And skeptically, um, our Made with Reishi Instagram, um, our Made with Reishi site, this is where you will see the latest stories and product updates. Um, and actually, there's a story that just went live today on madewithreishi.com that, that tells my founder's story that goes into some more detail about the origins of this collaboration in um, art and biotechnology. And um, it's, it's, a, it's a great story. Um, it's also the, um, where I, I say a little bit about the history that we have conducting life cycle analyses mm -hmm. on our material. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, we are planning ahead to publishing a full life cycle analysis, uh, wow. but it's, it's a good teaser for that. Yes, yes. Okay, looking forward. I'll I'll check that out right after this. Thanks. Thank you, thanks everyone, so for much. joining. Yeah, thanks for joining. <laughs> thanks, Keiko. All right. Thanks, Bye, Brooklyn Shoe Space. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Sophia. <laughs>